Hey, and welcome to today's episode talking about VO2max. What is VO2max? Why is it important to you? Why should you even care about it? So let's start with looking at the term VO2max and what this actually means and where it actually comes from. You can divide the term into three snippets, which is the V with a dot, the O2, and the max. The V with a dot is simply a flux rate. So it is volume over time. O2 obviously means oxygen and max for maximum. So it is the maximum option up here. So let's have a look how VO2 max is actually composed. Well, it starts with the oxygen, so the air that you inhale. So it has something to do maybe with your lung capacity. At least that's something you may find in a textbook. And then it's about the cardiovascular system transporting the oxygen via the blood to your working tissue, which is a muscle, okay? And ultimately, this is where the oxygen is used, okay? The oxygen is used in the muscle for energy, or better saying, maybe for power production, okay? Now, what is important to note is that in most people, the first two parts here, how much air you can take in and how much you deliver to your muscles is not the limiting factor. In fact, the blood that goes back from the muscle to the lungs contains a significant amount of oxygen and only a small fraction is actually taken out by the muscle, even under hard exercise. So the bottleneck is the combustion in the muscle, actually. Okay, so as an endurance athlete, this maybe is interesting to you, maybe it's not. You may ask, okay, why should I care? Like, how, how does this affect my performance? But pretty straightforward, if you want to produce one watt of power output on the bike, it requires a certain amount of oxygen. And that's pretty much fixed between you know, one athlete and another. It doesn't really change. It is approximately 12 milliliters per minute to produce one watt of power on the bike. So to get this straight, you wanna go 100 watt, this requires 1.2 liters. 200 watts, 2.4, 300 watts, 3.6, and so on and so forth. Of course, in some scenarios, maybe you can replace a little bit of the oxygen demand by actually anaerobic metabolism. But this substitute is not really of interest for you as an, as an Ironman athlete or triathlete. So long story short, you want to produce power aerobically, you need oxygen for it. And it's a pretty fixed relationship. So higher power requires more oxygen. This is why you care. Same thing goes for the running. It requires approximately 3.5 milliliter per kg, so per kilogram body weight, to run one kilometer power of speed. Obviously it differs. If you have a better running economy, it's down to three. You don't have really good running economy, it goes up to like four milliliters. And if you want to bring it back to miles per hour, it's somewhere in the range 5.7, so five to 6.5, depending on your running economy. So long story short, you are Performance in endurance training and endurance triathlon, in, in triathlon uh, competitions is highly determined because it's an aerobic sport. How good is your aerobic system? So what are the common ranges for VO2 max? What is high, what is low? Well, untrained persons go a range about 30 to 35 milliliters per kg. It decreases a little bit with age normally. Um, females have a little bit lower VO2 max as well. Somewhere in this ballpark. Amateur athletes, recreational athletes, big range, somewhere lower 40s to higher 60s up into the 70s. Depending again on age, again males a little bit higher than females. And for pro athletes, 75 plus. Ironman athletes, actually you can win Hawaii with a VO2 max somewhere in the ballpark of 75. Um, when you look at professional cycling or cross-country skiing or other sports, 80 and, and above. One of the most common misunderstandings is that some people make the error to think VO2 max is not trainable. It's totally determined by genetics and why should I care because it's fixed anyway. But first off, it's a little bit strange to think that any, you know, any metric in your body is, is not subject to change, at least by age, right? Um, everything in your body basically adapts and VO2 max is no exception, right? So in fact, VO2 max is one of the best 
trainable metrics, maybe the most adaptable metric in your portfolio of metrics for your endurance performance. It will react to good training, it will decrease with too hard training and overreaching, and it will do so actually very, very quickly. You can see adaptations within weeks. However, what is genetically determined, at least to a significant amount, and maybe this is where the misunderstanding or misperception comes from, is how quickly it adapts. So when you start training, or when you change your training, how quickly can you see change? And how high can it go? So not everybody can go to 75, right? That's, there seems to be a genetic ceiling on the maximum you can reach. However, if you train longer or long enough, maybe it can push it further, this boundary. And the, and the third thing that seems to be genetically determined by a good amount is how much do you have to train to change it, right? And what training actually you have to do to change it. This vastly differs as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.